Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for day six of the video series, A Week of Blooms, featuring Penny Black's newest creative dyes. And today I am cheating just a little bit because I am actually featuring this bird dye, this new bird dye, but I've added some flowers and some blooms, so I think that should count. <laughs> so today I'm going to be creating sort of an assembly line style and doing some watercoloring with these bird die cuts, and then creating three cards with the same layout featuring those dies. And the die that is new that I'll be featuring first here is the creative die called Courier. It's 51-734. It comes with the bird, the um, couple of easy layering pieces, and the branch that uh, the bird can be perched on. So to begin, I thought I'd give you just a little bit closer look at my setup here for watercoloring using Distress Ink Reinkers used as watercolors. So I just have this plastic palette. I think I got it at like Target, but you can use an acrylic block, even an old plate, any type of non-porous surface. And I just put a couple of drops of those reinkers in there and then I am ready to paint. So I went ahead and cut the Courier die cut from Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. And now I'm just going to have some fun here painting these dies. Now you could cut these from colored cardstock if you didn't want to do any painting. You could also cut them and ink them just using like an ink blending tool and a foam pad. You can use whatever type of watercolors or paints that you like. You could even color them with markers or Copic markers. Whatever you like you can always um, create with these with whatever you like. Now sometimes when I go to create cards I feel kind of overwhelmed by like what should I make on this card today? Sort of like the blank canvas card scenario. <laughs> so when I'm feeling that way, what I'll often do is start with just a product that I'm really loving. So for example, I'm really loving this bird die and I will just sit and cut, like just die cut a whole bunch. Uh, that's why I like to do either white cardstock or watercolor paper because then I can do the inking and my color choices later after I've just kind of done the mindless die cutting, just sitting there die cutting, watching a good show. Um, and so then once I've done that, then I just sit down and color or paint. And in this case, I'm painting without having to have a design in mind yet. So I can just have fun playing with paints, playing with die cuts. And sometimes even as I'm painting them, an idea will come to mind. But I sort of remove that pressure for myself and just enjoy the process of creating and if these don't even end up on a card, that's okay. I store my dies just in basic envelopes. <laughs> and if I paint something or I die cut something and I don't get it to a card, I just stick it in the envelope and I know it's ready. I might use it on another card in the future. So I'm just coloring and painting these pieces, playing around with some different color combinations. So I painted the bird and now I am adding some paint to the sort of chest layering piece that goes on the bird. And I like how this bird is designed to be sort of like generic bird. It doesn't have to be a robin or a blue jay or a cardinal or anything like that. So your color choices don't have to be technical either. If you are looking for inspiration, sometimes I will Google search like um, bird watercolor and do a Google image search and then look at the images just for ideas for colors. But today I just did a blue, I think I did a yellow, and then I'm doing sort of a brown sort of neutral color. Um, for the card. So I'm just adding that paint. I do end up going back and adding some inking on top of this, which you'll see. But um, for the most part here, I'm just starting by enjoying the painting process and just putting on some color to these die cut pieces. Now, I did want to add some flowers to keep with our week of blooms. So after I painted my birds, I die cut 51-419 Cherry Blossom. This is a die that we had in a previous release, but I love this. It's a really versatile die, and it's a great matchup with these birds. So I'm going to start again. This is just another one of those situations where I had my, just sat through and did my die cutting and then sat down to do the painting. I still don't yet have a plan for this car have any idea what I'm going to do with it but I'm just enjoying painting and kind of just giving me some pieces that I can play around with on a card to come up with the card design. So I'm starting here by painting just the stems and the leaves and then I will go back and add some color to the flowers. 
So I'm going to start here with kind of your traditional cherry blossom light pink and add that to these flowers. Now all of the exact colors, the papers, everything that I'm using will be listed down in a supply list in the YouTube description box below. I will also list and link all of the Penny Black products to our online store um, so you can take a closer look at those in the online store if you're interested. So the first set of flowers there were pink and now I'm going to, I kind of wanted these to be like to read as just a white flower but it looked a little plain to me so I'm adding just a touch of gray to the center of these flowers and I love on this particular die cut it has that piercing towards the center of those flowers it's really a nice detail that finishes it off very easily let's drop in a little bit darker color here And then I'll move on to my last one, which is going to be yellow. So I'm just putting down a light layer of yellow onto all of the flowers. And I'll get these little two ones up here. Now this is the branch that does come with that new bird die cut and I'm just going to paint that with the brown gathered twigs distress ink reinker used as a watercolor. Now I decided I wanted to add just a little bit extra here to these flowers. This is a ink blending detail tool. This is from Wendy Vecchi and I'll have it listed down in that supply list and I'm just sort of using that circular tip of that and some distress ink to just add a little bit darker color towards the center of those flowers and on the edges of those little blooms and I think that adds so much. You could also go back in with paint and add that in but I like combining the um, water coloring with my ink blending tools. I just think it gives a nice layered look with lots of variation in color and it doesn't look quite as flat then when it's added to the card. And I'll do the same thing here on the birds. Often I will use the same Distress Ink ink pad color as the paint, Distress Reinker paint color that I used. And it just kind of intensifies that and smooths it out. If you have any places where you didn't like how your watercoloring turned out, just don't throw it away. Keep it and you can add some inking on top often and kind of smooth it out and revive it, so to speak and a little bit here on this brown one. Starting off of the edge and then working my way on with a circular motion or kind of on these smaller pieces just sort of swiping it across there. And then I'll do that same thing on the branches, just a light layer there to even it out. Now these are the eyes and the beak layering pieces from the the bird set and I've just put them on a piece of painters tape here to make them easier to paint and also to dry with my heat tool and then I also don't lose them on my work desk so I'm just adding some color onto those and I will be ready to start assembling the birds so I just glue down this sort of chest piece for the bird I'm using liquid glue. This is Tombow Mono Liquid Adhesive and I love that it dries really clear so it's forgiving if it kind of squirts out on you when you're putting it down if you get a little too much. And I'll use that also for the beak and for the eye. And then I'll follow the same process for all of the birds, just assembling them all and having them ready to go on the card. Now I'm ready to work on my card. So I decided to go with a square card and with a die cut and a window on top. So this is kind of like the background piece and I'm using an ink blending tool and a foam pad to add some sky to the background. I am concentrating the color on that bottom right hand corner because I want it to be sort of darker behind the bird and the branch and then lighter as it moves towards that upper left hand corner. So I'm just testing that out here and then I will darken it up just a touch before I do my stamping. 
So the die set that I'm using is this great die set. It's stitch square and circles. You get all of those circles as individual dies plus that square on the outside. You can use them individually or you can do like I'm I've done here where I cut the square and then added that circle to the middle as like a window. And then my sentiments are coming from this new sentiment set, So Thankful. And um, there's some really nice smaller sentiments in here that fit perfectly with these birds. Now I love with these birds, you could easily use them for masculine cards. And maybe instead of adding the flowers to the background, you might add some leaves. You could even also use these, I think, for beautiful autumn cards and even winter cards cards depending on what you do in the background behind them and what dies you add to that branch. So here is that frame die cut piece with the circle inside or that kind of window piece. I'm popping that up with some foam squares just for extra dimension. So I stamped my sentiment and then now I can start putting all my pieces together. And so you can see sort of um, on this card idea, I started with just playing around with the dies, painting, and then um, doing that for all of the birds, all of the flowers, then inking up all those backgrounds. And now it's just a matter of assembling things. And I'll just use the same layout for all three cards. And these could be even given as a finished set to someone. Um, I think that would be really fun because of the color variations. Now this is that cherry blossom die and I'm going to trim this apart to fit my design a little bit better. So that's another fun thing you can do with dies is just trim them as you go which makes them great for that sort of assembly line style because if you don't have an idea on your design that's okay because you can modify them when it comes time to put your card together. And then I'll add this one. And I just did the same thing for the other two cards using the same arrangement. And you can see that here on all three. Now a final little step here is I have some white acrylic paint and a teeny tiny little brush from my stash. And I'm going to add a little dot or a highlight to the bird's eye. Wow, what a difference that makes. It really brings it to life. And you could do that with a gel pen too. I just have better luck with paint when I do that, just a cheap white acrylic paint. So here is a look at this finished set of cards. Um, again, we have one more day in our Week of Blooms video, so I hope you'll subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and know you can connect with Penny Black and get lots more inspiration all over the web. So you can follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter, as well as our website and our blog. And I'm going to link all of those places for you down in the YouTube description box below as well. Thanks again for watching and happy stamping.